How is it going, everybody? Welcome, everybody. I am your uncle, Elon. No, just kidding. But how is everybody doing tonight? Looks like already got some some of my OG crews already here. Crit, hello. Jersey Red. Silvio. Thanks, Jersey. Appreciate that. <clears throat> All right. So tonight, uh, as usual, I'm, you know, just trying to think what could we, what could we do? And when anyhow, uh, the, I heard this song and went, oh yeah, this would be a cool one to do. Uh, so uh, that this would be a cool, a cool song we go through. Cause it just, it doesn't, it just uses a bunch of chords that you probably already know how to play. It's not really too terribly difficult and it sounds really good. So as usual, there is uh, a link in the description so you can download the tabs for this so you can follow along and, you know, get them. This is like a, this is like a really cool tune. It's a lot of fun to play. Anyhow, I guess I should say that. So the song we're doing is, is getting better by Tesla. Moonflower, hello, welcome. Hello, Dan, Tesla fan. Just giving everybody a minute to <clears throat> download the tabs. Got anybody uh, new tonight? And if so, where are you? Where are you from? Oh, and crit just to make sure that we're on the same page. So right now it's five oh three. So I'm assuming that where you're at it is seven oh three. Is that correct? Oh, other from Yep, seven oh three. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, cool. So we've got that all we got that all worked out. All right, so I hope everybody has uh, gotten a chance to grab the tabs and uh if uh if you're new and you like what you know stick around if you like what we're doing subscribe like the video you know all that stuff that everybody says to do uh but it is important that whole you know youtube algorithm thing and it keeps it, it enables me to keep a job so helping me out too so you're helping the channel and you're helping me personally all right, so this one is split up into three uh, pages, <clears throat> and it uh, one of these videos I'll figure out a way to make it so it doesn't have to be like this. But uh, anyway, yeah. So we've got just some basic chords. The first look at we've got D major. So all these chords are just regular open chords with the exception of B minor, which is a bar chord. Um, but we'll we'll look at that when we get there. So we've got, you know, regular old D. And then we've got A major. Now, when I play A, I, I just use one finger, but I know a lot of people do it this way where they'll use, you know, their first, second, and third, or their second, third, and fourth fingers like that. And if that's how you do it, that that's that's cool. But I would encourage you for on this one to just do it with one finger because we're going to do a uh, a suspended four, like pull off, hammer on pull off, and it's just a lot easier to do it this way. Um, and then we've got a B minor. So if this is a chord that you struggle with, um, it, this should be a little bit easier because where 
we're fretting the the second fret of the A string with you know your first finger, and then the fourth uh, fret of the D string with your third, fourth fret of the G string with your uh, fourth, and the <clears throat> uh, third fret of the B string with your second. And we're not worrying about the high E string in this, so you technically don't have to bar. So if you just did the shape like for an A minor, just with the wrong fingers, just move it up and then pick up that note. Now, later on, we do have to, I th think we have to pick it up later on without this bass note. I'll show you how to do that when we get there. It's, it's, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Um, then we've got an E over A flat. So if you just put your first finger down like you were going to do an E file, like a power chord. And then your third finger will pick up the fourth fret of the uh, um, the low E string because that's your A flat. Uh, then we have a G, A, D. Yeah. So I think those are all the chords except for something that comes like more towards the end. Hello, Angel. Uh, yeah. So. The whole thing is done, you know, it's everything's all arpeggiated. I mean, you could do this finger picking. I've done it before, but honestly, I feel that it's for the most part, it's it's totally easy to just do it with the pick. Uh -huh. <clears throat> all right, so we're gonna start off with that D. And we're gonna pick starting on the D string. We're gonna I'm just gonna call off the string. So we're gonna go D, G, B, D. And these are eighth notes, so that's like one and two and. Then we're going to go up to our high E string. We're going to pick that, and then we're going to do a hammer on to the third fret of the high E string with our fourth finger to make it a D suspended four. We're going to pick that hammer and then pull back off. And then follow that with the B and the G string. So we've got <clears throat> now as far as like how i'm picking it i actually just purposely did it a couple of different ways they're trying to just because i know it's it's one of those things i never really think about but if you down 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 and then uh, sit down, 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 up. And then you could up or down, up, up. That's like, that's one way you can do it. I wouldn't put a whole lot of focus on that. If you really work on, I mean, you, obviously you don't want it to be where you're only doing down strokes or only doing up strokes for that matter. Uh, but it isn't like something that's gonna be like alternate picked necessarily. So that's the first measure. Then the second measure, we go to A. So again, I, this is the way that, you know, the preferred way to do this, I believe, um, for this particular song anyway. So we're gonna start here and we're gonna do the same kind of picking sequence that we did, but we're going to move it down a set of strings. So now we're gonna start on the A string and it'll be A, D, G, A, now we'll go to the B string, same thing. We're gonna pick, and now we're gonna hammer to the third fret on the second on the B string with your second finger. Pull off back to the G string, and then ending on the A string. All right, so that is the first two measures. All right, then we're going to go to that B minor. So we're only going to be playing just the A, D, G, and B string. So you don't need to like, if bar, if doing the bar chord, where most people end up having problems with bar chords, like as beginners, is that when they're trying to flatten out across the fret, they can't get all the strings. And there's like numerous things that can, that can be an issue. Uh, mostly it's just 
the shape of your finger, you know, uh, whether your finger, you have a, a flat, like my fingers are really flat. This is like the only advantage I've ever had at guitar is that these, my hands are really flat. I don't have any, I don't have a lot of definition between my, the joints and my finger. Well, other people aren't like that. They're, you know, the, they have a lot more fatty tissue on this side of their hand. So when they try to bar, it can cause a lot of problems. Uh, uh, so anyhow, one simple, I mean, this isn't a lesson on bar chords per se, but uh, uh, when you go to bar, if you're having trouble doing that, bring your elbow, roll, roll it in towards the body of the guitar. And I don't know how well you can see this with my finger. As I bring this in, instead of being barring on the, on the bottom part of my finger, I'm actually kind of more barring on the side, kind of on the, you know, uh, partway between being on the bottom and on the side. It, uh, just doing little motions like that can make the difference between you successfully doing it uh, or having issues. All right, so we can do that B minor, and we're just going to pick starting A, D, G, B, and then to an A major. And again, if you just if you do it with one finger, like I was saying, this transition is really easy. You just scoot your finger up, so now that the A string is open same picking and it's eighth notes so that's one and two and three and four and so that's like the first the first three uh three measures and that much of it is repeated like about a billion times throughout this oh hi vincent point pleasant new jersey cool welcome All right, so before I move along, does anybody have any questions about anything that we just went over? Uh, if you're, if you're, uh, you know, a beginner um, or fairly, you know, inexperienced with guitar, you may not, you may not really understand the suspended, you know, the that we were doing or the bar chords. So if you have any questions, now is the time to ask, and I'll see, you know, if I can help you out with that. Oh, and the questions don't need to be about what we're doing here per se either. It's just general question and answer like like what we usually do. All right. No, well, we can move along then. Um, let's see. So after we do that third measure, the B minor to the A, now we've got that E over A flat thing that we were... Um, uh, that we looked at earlier. So the transition is really easy. You go from this A, just scoot your finger back down. So now we're barring the second fret of the A and the D string, and then bring your third finger. Uh, or, and if, and if that don't, you know, I've, I've seen people before where they really struggle to do that. If it's easier to use your pinky, that's, that's totally fine. But all it is is we're just getting it. So we're starting on the low E. We've got four and then two, on the A and two on the D. So we do that. Um, e, A, D, E. Then you take your that finger off and just hit that E5 and then follow that with the, um, the high E and the B string open. So you go, it's like one and two and three, four, like that. What if you struggle from regular open chords to bar chords? Um, do you mean you're having trouble making a transition from a regular chord to a bar chord? Like... Like on this, where it goes from that A 
So that B minor, do you have, is that what you're referring to is that you have, uh, okay. So, um, it, you know, it kind of depends on what chord you're going, you're traveling from, like doing this A to B minor would be a completely different motion than if I was going from D to B minor, but one isn't necessary. I mean, I guess going from A to here is a little bit easier, but the, the main thing is what we want to look at is, is your, when you're the chord that you're going to, you got to get it to where when you're going to land to that, that you're doing it if efficiently. Uh, beginners a lot of times, uh, I remember, I remember doing this. I remember thinking the bar chords were going to be, like the most impossible thing ever to do. Uh, and it, you know, like I said, I had the advantage that I didn't have any problems doing this, but it was just getting everything together. And then these fingers not laying down and muting strings and stuff, it was really, really difficult. So that's the first step is just getting the, uh, play the chord, you know, it's so like we just take this B minor, put your fingers on, make sure you're getting all those notes. And then <clears throat> you can, look at your hand while you're doing this and keep that shape, but try to lift your fingers up off the fretboard, maybe, you know, about a half of an inch and try to keep that shape and then set them all back down at the same time, each time giving it a strum. So what we're trying to do is just train our fingers to, to want to make that shape. So that way you, you, instead of like putting your finger down and doing this to build it, you're just making the shape on the way there. So anyhow, if you do that, just slowly like that for like five consecutive minutes, do that every day and you'll start getting to where you can go further. And then when, once you can just grab it like that, you've got it. Then you can start working with making the changes, you know. <laughs> things like that. I hope that that's, I hope that that's helpful. Uh, I'm playing for about a year now on the past four months after buying an SG, my playing has really improved. Also thanks to videos like this one. Oh, you are, you are totally welcome. Um, living, living with a bogan. I apologize. I don't know what is wrong with, uh, I can't see. <laughs> I'm really struggling today to be able to see. Yeah, your elbow position for with the bar chords, totally. So um, just really quick, I'll just show you what... Me personally, this is the way that I feel is the best posture, the best way to sit when you play. Um, now, there's lots of people who don't play like this who are, you know absolutely amazing, better than me. Uh, so this isn't the secret to that, but I think it is the secret to overall kind of, it kind of puts you in a neutral spot for anything. So when I play sitting down, you probably play like this. So like, if, you know, you're playing right-handed, you put your guitar on your right leg. Um, try putting it on your left leg. So the bout is between your legs. Now uh, this takes getting used to, like it will probably feel weird for you know, two or three days. Um, but then you get used to it. It's so much easier because this is the same position. If you had, if you're using a strap and you stood up, your guitar would be in this spot. Everything was really neutral and it gives you all of this room. So like if I'm playing like a D chord, my arms like this, when I switch to a C, it comes in like this and F comes in more like this G I'm, you know, there's all these different motions that I have depending upon what chord I'm playing. Uh, anyhow, sitting in this, in this position, it gives you that ability to really, you don't have to worry about, you know, your body being in the way of your arm being able to get that uh, movement. And then, uh, like a lot of method books, they say, oh, keep your thumb, you know, right here on the back of the neck. Um, well, well, that is a place for lots of things you're doing, but there, there will be things that where sometimes you're going to bring your thumb up or around the other way. So don't feel like it needs to be glued right there. And uh, the last thing is with your arm is that you want your wrist 
you can do some things with your arms straight like this, but most of the time it's going to be bent in this way, not this way. So you don't want to stick the palm of your hand against the back of the guitar. You always want to have like a space. And my wrist bent like that because then you can you can spread your fingers apart. If you if you try to come up like this with your palm up, then you can't get your fingers spread apart. I've seen lots and lots of people think that they can't play guitar because of that, because they think that they're that there's something wrong with their hand or whatever because they can't make these reaches, and that that's just simply not the case. <clears throat> Anyhow, Dan, I hope that uh, I hope that answers your question. Uh... Oh, you're welcome, Dan. <clears throat> uh, ACDC actually has a lot of stuff that they're that some of the chords are. Well, and they're not like, I wouldn't say they're like really difficult, but they're a little unusual and a little, a little harder than the average bear. All right. <clears throat> See, so. All right. So I believe we left off with that uh, on major four. So we've got that E over A flat. Now we we'll switch to a G and we're going to just start on the low E and we're going to just play up through this a whole measure of eighth notes. So we're going to be one and two and three and four and so E, A, D, G, B, G, D, E. Back to an A, A, D, G, A, and then that uh, suspended four thing again. So that measure is like the uh, the second one, with the exception of the last note, is on the A string and not the D string. And then back to the D with the little uh, hammer on uh, the D D suspended uh, four thing. <clears throat> All right, so then that brings us down to the bottom of page one, measure eight and um, measure nine. Oh, oh, okay. Gosh, I said bear. I'm like, bear hounds. Beer hounds, cool. California, awesome. <clears throat> I like beer, so you know, you had me at you had me at beer. Uh yeah, all right. So when we come down here, this is just for those of the, you that maybe don't understand this. So on the very first measure, at the very beginning of it, there's a double line with the with the colon. So that's the beginning of a repeat. And then you come down to the end of measure eight, and now you see a colon with a double line. That's the end of the repeat. So you're going to play from the first measure through the eighth measure and then come back and repeat it. But if you look over at the, over the top of measure eight, it's got this bracket, and it has the number one. And then on measure nine, it has a bracket with a number two. So what this is telling you is that the, the first time you play this, you'll play from uh, starting at measure one, and you'll play through measure eight. And then you will go back and do it again. But this time you'll come through and you'll play through measure seven, but we're gonna skip measure eight and go to measure nine because that's the that's what the two in the bracket, that's the second ending. So the first time is the first ending, the second time is the second ending. So coming from our first time, so measure seven, to measure eight, so it's basically the same thing. So if you're familiar with this song, the first time through is just a uh, guitar. And then the second time through uh, the vocals come in. So the first time through that first eight measures. Back to the beginning. Now 
Now seven. Now we're going to skip eight and go to nine. So there we have another new chord. So we have A, and we're going to start playing. And again, this is one where it's easier to just do it with your first finger. Uh, starting on the A string, A, D, G, B. So one and two and, and then we have A over C sharp. So we're just going to keep that A, and we're going to pick up the third, excuse me, the fourth fret of the A string and do the same thing, the same a, D, G, B. So we have. All right. And then that leads us on to the next, the next page. This would be easier if I could just look at all this at the same time. So uh, we starting, let's see, we measure 10. It's just like the beginning again. To A, B minor, A, E over A flat, to the G, A, D. Now I have to scroll. I have to zoom this in so I can. So my old blind ass can see it. Uh, we go to um, measure 17 now. We're on B minor. So this is where that different, it has the uh, different uh, thing I told you we have to deal with later on. So again, with this B minor, the only note that we're really picking up with our first finger is just the second fret of the A string. Then we've got a B minor over A. So all we're going to do is just change our bass note to an A. So we're just going to take our first finger, and I just scoot it up so that way it's by. Even though we're not playing that high E string, I just I just move up like that because you get this is still a chord that you can strum or whatever too. Same picking pattern. Back to the G. And I flip the page again. Back to A. To D. All right. So, like I said, if you're <clears throat> if you're familiar with the song, then you know that you go through the first. You go through the first, uh, you play the from the first through the eighth measure. And then you go back to the first measure again and you play it all the way through again. But this time you skip the eighth measure and you go right to the ninth. Because again, it has that, that bracket over the top of the measure with the one and then the other one has the two. So the first time around you do the first ending, the second time around you do the second ending. Now, just in case any of you are completely have never seen this before, like, you know, with repeats. If it didn't have those brackets, you would just play one through eight and then play it again and then just move on like normal. It, it wouldn't, you know, if it didn't have this first ending, second ending thing. Ooh. Yeah, so see, one through eight, and then one through seven, skip eight, go to nine, and then it's just straightforward through uh, the rest of it. So when it gets all the way, like the first time through, there's no singing. The second time through, it's singing, and he's like, getting better every day. And then, then from there, it's where it goes on into the, you know, the, the, the heavier, faster part of the song which I uh, I guess I should have included it. I didn't think we'd blow through this this first part of it this quickly. Um, but I can just show you how to do it because it's really easy. It's three chords. 
and it just has a distinct rhythm. So we don't need the tabs for that. You can write it down what the three chords are. So yeah, we can do that. So does anybody have any questions about any of that that we just went over or just other guitar related questions in general? Um, I have no idea if I could play that. I've never tried. Um, I'm not, I'm not really like super familiar with Testament. Uh, I really like, um, Skullnick. He's like, he's like a smoking awesome guitar player, but, uh, Testament was just a band that I never really followed a lot. So I'm not really, I'm, I'm not familiar with a lot of their stuff. I'm not even sure if I've heard it. I probably have, but I just wouldn't know the name or whatever. Hello, Steve. Welcome, Ontario, Canada. Nice. So let's uh, let's look at the uh, <clears throat> uh, the rest of this 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 other riff. Like I said, I don't have the tabs for it, so you just have to write it down. So we've got A, and again, this would also be much easier to do with just the single finger than this method. Is there a link to your 80s rock lessons on here? Um, I don't know. I mean, it could be in the description. I don't write the description, so I don't I don't know if it's in there. Um, but it's easy to find if anybody's interested. I did a course for Guitar Control, uh, 1980s guitar song collection. Uh, if you just go to guitarcontrol.com in the shop, you'll see it. They, there's, a, there's a 1960s uh, that... Uh, um, Will Ripley did, and there's a 1970s that John McLennan did, and then I did the 1980s one. Yeah, Jersey said that he, he got it just recently. Uh, best hand position for arpeggios. Um, so I'm assuming you're meaning for your fretting hand. Uh, because that's going to really vary depending upon what kind of an arpeggio you're doing, like what kind of shape it is. If, uh, if you're doing like, you know, three string of arpeggios, like on the, the, the high E, B and the G string. When I'm doing them there, I have my thumb down. So I would think about it that it's like a, you know, this is the equator here. So I'm a little below. <clears throat> because these are like, a, like generally have like a bigger stretch. So I want just my fingers are just playing. They're just playing single strings, just sing, playing single note. As, as where if you were doing arpeggios like like this, where I'm going across all the strings, 
my third finger is playing the the A and the D string. My first finger is playing the G, B, and high E strings. So when I'm doing this, my thumb is more right about on the equator. But again, this exactly the same way for everybody. It depends on your guitar, like, you know, the size of your hands, length of your arms, like literally how you're sitting. If you're standing, how high you have the strap up or down. There's like a bunch of variances there. Um, if, if, uh, hand and pick placement, I never feel 100% comfortable with that. <laughs> um, Yeah, so if, if you're just getting into doing like stuff with arpeggios and like sweet picking and stuff, I would really recommend you to start off with just, you know, with two strings. So there's a minor one. Uh, and a major one. So like this is one, three, five, one flat, three, five. If you just start off with the two strings and work with that, and then work into three, four, five, all the way through six. Um, as you do that, you're you're going to kind of adapt to how how you need to do it. The it's all about efficiency. You don't want to have to move any further than necessary. That includes lifting your fingers off the fretboard excessively high, things like that. And then for your uh, um, <clears throat> for your right hand. Uh, it's basically with this, the especially if you're doing where, where, it's, where you're doing a sweeping arpeggio, you don't you don't want like a whole bunch of because it's the idea is you're just moving in one direction, so it's like all down, you know, or all up or whatever. So you don't want uh, you don't want it to be like a whole bunch of little tiny downstrokes or a bunch of upstrokes you want it to be one long continuous motion so then you just so then if you start working that with the arpeggios if i'm down up now when i go to the second string before i even pick it i've let the guitar pick come to a rest on that string So the same way I go down, down, I just let the pick come to the a rest on the next string. And then you work up to where it's like that you can make it one long continuous motion. I hope that really, I hope that helps. I mean, it's kind of, uh, it's easier to work with stuff with like learning with sweeping and stuff if we actually had like, we were on the same page of what we were playing, like what arpeggios or whatever. Um, how your hand should sit on the bridge. Okay. Uh, oh, you mean the pick hand on the arpeggio hitting the wrong string? Oh, so what you're doing is you're you're having some issues with synchronization. Okay, so that what I was just showing will will help with that a lot. So if you if you just did like a like a, a minor arpeggio on the D G B and high E string. So like here I'm nine and then seven, seven, seven. So what I'm doing I've got my hand in the position I would be in if I was gonna like palm mute. But I just kind of I don't like set it all the way down. I do I I go into that as I ascend. This is really hard to like see. Like I wish we could like, you know, be in the be in the same room, it would help, uh, or I could zoom in better, but um, I hit that note on the D string. I let the pick come to a rest on the G string. And at the same time as I move up, I remove this finger. So that way the string becomes dead. And then my, as my hand, my palm is sliding across the bridge. So that way I get each note separate. Cause you don't want, well, I mean, not that that isn't cool, but <laughs> for what we're trying to do, you want. If 
like that. Hopefully that helps. I mean, that the biggest thing with that technique is you just have to be patient and tenacious. Do it really slow, precisely, and just work on it. You can get it, you know, really slow with a metronome. So, I mean, if it's literally each note is like, you know, pick, pick, pick. You're playing that slow. You're playing 30 beats a minute. You have everything. So it sounds exactly how it should. The notes, the they, um, they're ringing out at the right time. They're not muted. The string, you know, the notes that, that aren't supposed to be there are muted. Then you can speed it up and just do it over a period of time and uh, you'll get better. I look at it as that if I, if I could have gotten to be able to do it halfway decent, anybody should be able to, because I'll tell you, like I sucked at it real hard for a long time. It was, I didn't think I'd ever be able to do it. <clears throat> Um, when picking, how do you hold the pick and is your picking hand on the guitar or floating in the air? Okay. That's a good question. So, um, again, this is just how I do it. Um, there's lots of people with really bizarre picking technique like Marty Friedman. Uh, if, if you're not familiar with who Marty Friedman is, just look him up on YouTube. Uh, pretty much any video you watch of him, if he's playing, just watch his picking hand. He's got the most bizarre looking picking technique. But how I do it, um, I have kind of smaller hands, so I use I use a smaller pick. They're a uh, like a um, a jazz size pick, and I just hold the pick with my thumb and my first finger like this. So I've got the back part of the pick here. I've got it actually up against the inside of my first knuckle, and then uh, my thumb is just holding it down. So that way that it, it's just a little bit of the pick is protruding from the side of my thumb at a, at a hard 90 degree angle. <clears throat> if I am playing on the higher strings, I'm resting the, this part of my hand right here, like the, like, like they call that the ball of your thumb. I have it resting just on the lower string so they don't start vibrating and making noise. Now, if I'm just, I actually rest just these fingers right here on the guitar. Sometimes if I'm playing on the lower strings, I might actually kind of gra grasp the higher strings this way. Um, as a general rule, I always try to keep a part of my right hand touching the guitar at all times when I'm playing. Um, now, if I'm like strumming, that's different. But if I'm like, like soloing, I don't want... I mean, even though a lot of people make a fist and play like that. And if I'm trying to play something really fast, I end up just picking these fingers up. So that way I can pick quicker. But um, as a general rule, I keep them down because I don't like, I like a uh, legato sound, like the, the verses, you know, and I'm better at it <laughs> too. Uh, but yeah, um, that's how I do it. Um, it's all just about, keeping hearing what you want to hear but not hearing all the stuff that you don't want to hear you know so any background noise and stuff that can be caused by strings left that can just start ringing when you're playing with a clean tone you don't really hear it but if you've got overdrive on you're gonna you're gonna hear it you know if you want to test it just plug your guitar and put it on a stand turn the volume up click on the overdrive and just sit there and the guitar will start making noise. It'll just, after a while, just start making a lot of racket. Now, if, imagine you're bumping it around and stuff while you're playing the same thing. It's going to be worse. So you've always got to be really muting uh, to keep everything clean. If you can't play it slow, you can't play it fast. That That's absolutely... That is absolutely true. Okay, great. Great uh, <laughs> beer hound. <laughs> I'm just going to call you a beer hound. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm glad it could be uh, of help. <laughs> the, you know, this this whole live streaming thing is, 
it is so bizarre. If I have done whole live streams where it's just about technique, about sweet picking and all this stuff, and nobody comes, there, there's no interaction or anything. Uh, and if and when there is, if there is, it's just people asking questions about strumming or, or or songs or something. And then I do a video about like songs and everything. And then and then most of the questions tonight have been about technique, which is fine. It's just really weird. There's just no way to uh, to really know what you know what y'all are going to want to do that particular day. Big reason why I don't uh, I don't put a whole lot of stress into trying to plan this out. Because I figure, well, all I got to do is have something, you know, some kind of content for you guys. And then it will just turn into whatever uh, it's going to turn into. And I don't I mean, I could just sit here and talk about guitar all night long, you know, so I'm totally cool with that. All right, beer hand, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it is beer o'clock. I'm I'm a uh, my mouth's getting a little dry. I got a dosaki's waiting for me upstairs. Oh Jersey, I can't get tired of you, man. Yeah, I know. It's probably not, you know, a, a, a beer that you would review, um, but it just happens to be what I have. Uh, I really like like craft beers and stuff, I like trying all that kind of stuff, but they uh, recently did some new tax bullshit here in my state, and it's it's becoming extremely expensive to, to buy stuff like that, and I just I can't afford it. Play guitar for a living, you know, so you know how poor I am. Bourbon, too. I got some, uh, um, well, it's not bourbon, it's Canadian stuff, but I got some Crown Royal and some Mexican Coca Cola, so might have to go with that. What's in my fridge? Well, there's a Mexican Coke, and there is uh, some Dos Equis and just like a bunch of various foods, lots of vegetable stuff, because I'm on a stupid diet where I just about can't eat any meat anymore. Oh, that'd be the ultimate place to live, right next to a, a brewery. It'd be awesome. <laughs> What's in my wallet? <laughs> Probably moths. What are your favorite bands? Um, well, uh, Kiss, like old Kiss, seventies, like the first. Um, I mean, I like stuff that they did throughout their whole career, more or less. But I, my heart really lies with the early stuff. Um, I'm just like kind of drawing a blank. Um, I listen to a, like a lot of different stuff. I don't have like real certain like favorite, favorite bands. Uh, I really like uh, Iron Maiden. And again, the first, the first of their catalog more so than the latter. I like a lot of stuff. Lately, I've been listening to a lot of Polyphia. Uh, yeah, Black Sabbath. Obviously, Sabbath is like it was giant, giant influence on me. Oh, you did not go as Peter Chris. Nobody wants to dress up like Peter Chris. Peter Chris doesn't even want to dress up like Peter Chris. That's from a Family Guy episode. In case you didn't, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm not uh, dissing you. <laughs> Uh, 
Polyphia is absolutely amazing. Uh, there, I haven't heard anything that really, I thought that just completely kicked guitar in the ass for a long time until I heard them. Um, and they've been around for a while, but I mean, I just got introduced to them a couple of years ago. Hey, I've got two cats. Mm. Like Peter Chris, and that's what they were saying is that why are you dressed like Peter Chris? No one wants to dress like Peter Chris, not even Peter Chris wants to be Peter Chris. Yeah, one of my students, he uh he showed me Polyphia and the first time I heard it, I, I didn't even comprehend what I was listening to. And I, I just totally didn't get it and kind of didn't. I went, oh, that's cool. And didn't really listen to it anymore. It kind of took me a couple of times to really like realize and then watching them play. Uh, I mean, they're they're absolutely sick. <laughs> All right, so I guess um, before we run out of time, I guess I should show you that last part of the song. Yeah, the the last time that I heard anything that I've had, like a, you know, a few like things that I heard in my life that were like life changing as far as music uh, kiss originally. Cause that's what turned me on to music in the first place. Well, to, to playing guitar. I was in like classical music before that when I was like, you know, five. Uh, and then um, hearing uh, Yngwie for the first time, like right when it came out, cause I grew up right in the thick of that whole 80 shred thing. And mm -hmm. uh that was like super life changing for me. And then uh, uh, Paul Gilbert, Racer X. And then not until Polyphia were anything really just, I mean, I heard Animals as Leaders is like really awesome. That guy's like, like totally sick. But that music in particular, the, the style of it didn't really do much for me. It didn't attract me like Polyphia has. <laughs> All right, so with that last part, we have A, a G, and a D. So it's really simple. So we've got that A, A, G, D, A, A, G, D. So the timing is a little bit weird, but if you think of it like that is A, A, G, D, A, A, G, D, A, A, G, D, A, A, D. That's like the whole rest of the song except for the... Uh, um, the chorus is like the Then when it goes to the chorus, it's a G, G, B minor, A. Yeah, so. Just goes back into that same thing again anyway yeah uh i that's twice now well twice in a row i'm sure i've done it more than twice uh where i haven't had as i haven't had as much tabs as we had stuff to do um because i'm always worried that we'll never get through it and then it'll be like oh yeah i downloaded the tab sorry we didn't talk about it or anything and then i don't want to like have to continue it into another another day but this was a real good one. We had a lot of good interaction and uh, a lot of good questions. And hopefully I was able to help some people out. All right. So if you like what I'm doing, um, hit the like button.
subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I do this every Tuesday night at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, also I do two or three just YouTube videos for this channel a week. Um, and well, other people doing videos, there's like all kinds of stuff going on. So <laughs> dang, you noodle good, even dry. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Crit. I appreciate it. Oh, hi, Rick. All right. Well, again, and uh, also, if you just if you just joined, um, you know, you came late or whatever, you missed the first of it. It's, there'll be a rerun. You can watch a rerun, and you can still download the tabs so that way you you know get for the for the Tesla tune that we did. Oh, thanks, uh, Beer Hound. Yeah, this, I really like this guitar. It's like my, it's pretty much my favorite right now. It's one I always, and if I'm going to play guitar, this is the one I pick up 90% of the time. <coughs> All right, yeah, so again, thanks everybody for coming out. I really appreciate it. And I will, uh, I will see you all um, uh, next week, and not sure what we'll do, but you know, we'll figure it out. All right. So again, I will see you all next Tuesday. I really appreciate everyone who came out, and um, yeah, means a lot to me. Thanks. <laughs>